it's my last night in Vegas and so that means this is going to be my last video that I shoot while I'm not at home and I thought I would do a complete transformation for you. The first thing I'm going to tackle is the hair. I'm going to use one of those toning mousses that I did a video of the other day, the Fanciful. This is the Lucky Copper. I'm also going to be laying in a spray over it, but I like using a tinted rinse as my base color because I think it looks a little more natural right around the root area. And when you're wearing a wig, the place that people really look is at your hairline. That's where people are checking to see if it's a wig. So if you've got the hairline cheated, nobody can tell. This is one of those instances where it really is nice to have the right tools for the job. Once I got going on this and I realized I didn't have my tint brush, it's like, wow, that was <laughs> way harder than it needed to be. It's a lot easier with a, a tint brush. You know, I'm putting a wig on, so I'm not really putting a whole lot of effort into styling as I'm blow drying. I'm really just blow drying this gunky colored mess to keep it from sticking to anything else. Because as you can see, there's a lot of cleanup involved. And fortunately, it cleans up with just uh, Kleenex and water. This is, of course, an extremely inexpensive wig because, well, <laughs> I'm cheap. And I selected this wig color because of the chunky highlights that it has in it. Um, I just thought that was a fun look. And I knew that with the sprays and the mousses that I use to cover my hair, it's hard to get a really, really exact match. So by having multiple tones in the wig, it allowed me to have multiple tones in my own hair that covers it and that camouflages it better. Had to even add a little bit right at the nape because when that wig lifted up a little bit, you could see a silver spot. So I just got a little dark under there so there's no silver popping out. And of course, I will have a link to the wig down below. Now, starting on the makeup. When I have auburn hair, my skin tends to take on a bit more of a ruddy look. So I wanted a green neutralizing primer. And I'd been hearing about the Maybelline Fit, so I wanted to try that. I also had the e.l.f. Hydrating Primer. And let me tell you, in Nevada, that air is so dry. My skin was easily looking 10 years older than it looks when I'm in California. I was very relieved to get back to California and have my skin start looking hydrated again. It just sucks all the moisture right out of you. The makeup that I'm doing is very similar to the makeup that I did in the video uh, classic makeup for a mature face. It's it's really my go-to. And then, you know, I decided to do this video sort of randomly. I'm like, oh, why don't I just transform myself? Because I have a day with not a whole lot going on, and you know, let's just play. So the tinted moisturizer is great on the neck area to make it match the foundation because in the summertime we all tend to get a little bit more color on our face and our chest. It was interesting traveling knowing that I was going to be shooting videos while I was there. I've never brought so much crap with me in all my life. Wow! That was a lot of makeup to travel with and I didn't even bring very much. I hardly brought any eyeshadows or eye pencils. I brought really just basics. But I tend to uh, travel lightly usually, so it was interesting for me to, I guess, travel like a girl and just bring the whole arsenal of everything. 
Because I dyed my hair red for so many years, it's uh, kind of fun for me to put on an auburn toned wig because I get to play with the makeup colors that don't work so well for me anymore. So I was getting to visit with a lot of old friends, so to speak, using a little more bronzer. I will also use the bronzer I double up um, with that as an eyeshadow later in the video. I don't know that I really show what it is. Hopefully I'll catch it when I'm doing my voiceover. Doing that classic three shape with the bronzer hitting all of the places that the sun would touch had I been out on morning hikes without as much sunscreen as I tend to wear. That is the eyeshadow that I had. I just brought my old palette and uh, can't tell you what any of the colors are because I have no clue what the colors are. I've had this thing a ridiculous amount of time. What can I say? Cheap. Using the Laguna on the NARS uh, Orgasm Laguna Duo as my eyeshadow, which is what you saw me do in the classic makeup video. Adding a little of the bronzer at the corners because those orangey tones really make the blue in blue eyes pop out a little bit more. Eyeliner is just plain black eyeliner. I didn't bring a whole lot of stuff, like I said. I figured a black eyeliner covers pretty much all your bases. So I just got the black on the lash line and then, of course, gave it a good smudge because I can never do an exact precise line. Going into the eyebrows, I still only had one brow pencil with me. It was blonde, so we start with that. Use the blonde eye pencil to get the basic brow shape, and then I will fill in with uh, one of the eyeshadows a little later. Just wanted to get a head start there. I picked up this Wet n Wild Balm Stain to replace the Revlon Honey, which has been discontinued, apparently. Wow, that's so pink now. It wasn't at all pink before. That's weird, it was so brown earlier. Oh, I'm gonna have to show you the difference someday. I mean, I didn't anticipate that today. <sighs> okay, hmm, might wanna choose a different lipstick. It's very pink. All pink when I had gray hair. Okay. I found that the Wet n Wild Balm Stain does not hold up nearly as well as the Revlon. So I'm going to finish up those eyebrows uh, just using a medium brown tone eyeshadow. One of the things with traveling, everything does double duty, triple duty. I'm surprised I don't have any eyeshadow in my hair knowing me. <laughs> I, I use everything everywhere completely inappropriately. I don't think a thing of it. When you're doing a complete transformation, it's important to just step back and take a look at everything periodically and see what needs adjusting. As I was tweaking the hair, I decided that I needed some blush. The bronzer wasn't enough. I needed a little pink in the cheeks because I decided I was going to keep that lip color on. And a little pink in the cheeks was going to just tie it in a little bit better. I'm a huge fan of tight lining the eyes. This is an Almay uh, eye pencil that is designed for blue eyes. It's sort of a midnight blue color and it just really makes the eye color pop. So at this point, I got the bright idea to contour my nose. Now, I am not a professional makeup artist, and the only thing I really know about contouring is what I've seen on YouTube videos done by other YouTubers, and I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so don't expect me to do a video tutorial saying here's how you're supposed to contour because I'm looking at this going oh crap did I just mess everything up 
how am I going to fix this? And I smudged and smudged and it looked okay. And that's when I decided to start adding a little bit of highlighter, once again from other YouTube videos that I've seen, hitting the cheekbones with the highlighter, the bridge of the nose, the eyebrows, and a little bit right above the upper lip. Just those places to give a tiny little shimmer. And the shimmer powder that I use is more drugstore stuff, and I've had it for an embarrassing long amount of time, and I was a little hesitant to even shoot the insert of the product to show you because it's so ancient. And I know their packaging has probably changed like five times since then. But it's a shimmer powder. How much do you go through? You hardly use any of it. So just layering on more eyeshadow. Still in that same brown palette, smudging with a little bit of yellow, just that, that light, light yellow to just soften the edges. A little black under the lash line. And then adding a little brown on top of the black. going to add a little bit of the Benefit Eye Bright right at the inside corner of the eye just to open that up a little bit. Didn't bring an eyelash curler, so not curling the eyelashes. Hitting the top lashes with a coat of the Hot and Naughty Mascara from MAC. I'll just hit the top for a little bit, let that dry, and then I'll hit the bottom a little bit later because I have a tendency to end up with a lot of little black lash marks on my brow bone if I go in too soon on the bottom lashes. I've got like seven hours to kill, so I can just play with this all day long. Actually, seven hours is an exaggeration. I've got three hours, so God knows how many layers I'll have on by the time I go out tonight. <gasps> oh, did I just mess that up? No, I didn't. Go ahead. I wanted a little more exaggeration on the eyes than I got with just the eye bright. So this is a sort of a gold candlelight shimmer powder. Uh, this particular brand is no longer on the market, but I think you could use the same uh, Bare Lights Revlon that I used earlier. And I don't know about you, but I find it completely impossible to do my lower eyelashes without having my mouth wide open. A little more fussing with the hair while I assess what needs finessing. And I decide to go in with a little bit of lipstick on top of the balm stain just to give it a little bit more depth. This is just a Revlon, a basic lip color. This is one that I used a lot when I had red hair that tends to be a little bland on me now with the silver hair, but I hang on to it because sometimes I like to transform myself. And there you have it start to finish my getting ready for my final night in Las Vegas. I have no idea what I'm going to wear tonight. Uh, my lipstick may change. My makeup may change. I'll keep you updated. And if uh, this is my final look, I hope you enjoyed the transformation process. This is a lot of the stuff that I've learned making movies over the years. You can easily transform yourself for a special night. You can see start to finish how I did it right here. And I give you specific instructions on a number of my other videos. Like if you want to see specific instructions on putting on the wig, you can see that in the not gray for a day video. However, in that video, I did not use this product. I only used the root covering spray. So you can do it either way. I just, 
I kind of like having the mousse in first because I feel like it gives a little bit, or, bit better coverage down at the root. And when you are wearing a wig, the place that people are looking is right here. So that is the most important part to take care of. I hope you have a great weekend. I certainly intend to. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Have a good one.